You have trouble wondering how you're going to trust again? For me, that's been a, an obstacle that has taken me to reading books and studying it and watching other people's videos. And today, I'm going to have a conversation with Dr. Roberta Shaler. Um, for those of you who have never met her, um, I have another video here on YouTube with her, and we've been in a bunch of podcasts together as well. She has written, I think, somewhere like 26 books on what she calls hijackles. Hijackals are basically abusive people, so it doesn't matter what we call them. She's calling them hijackals. And today we're going to talk about how do you trust again? What do we need to do to be confident in ourselves that we can trust not only someone else, but trust ourselves? So without any further ado, let's welcome Roberta. Thank you so much for joining me, Roberta. I'm so excited that you're here. So let's talk about how we rebuild trust. Or let's talk about what is trust, Roberta? Oh, golly. Such a basic question, Tracy. I think that trust is when I honestly believe I can entrust myself to another human safely. Mm -hmm. That I can count on them to keep my secrets, to uh, speak with me about me in warm, positive regard that I can tell them what I need and want without them making fun of me or rejecting me. I mean, basically trust is when I can say, I'm safe with you. And I think we really need to understand that that's the most basic piece of it, mm -hmm. that I can trust myself to be safe with you and entrust myself to you. Because we've all had these incredible experiences where we believe that we're creating emotional intimacy. So we have these nice moments and we feel close and all and we disclose something. And then the next thing, we have a fight with that person or a disagreement. And all of a sudden, they've brought those vulnerabilities out and they're throwing them at us like weapons. Yeah. And there's no trust possible there and we want it we want to believe we can trust someone that we love someone they love us and and so we wanted to believe that we could trust our parents maybe we couldn't mm -hmm. right yes. so very basic levels of trust what would you say it is well I, I think there's there's two parts of trust there's the part that is to trust others which is um, after abuse, certainly the most difficult part. Like you just said, we gave our trust and, and it was betrayed. And so, um, and that wasn't usually someone that was just like walking by on a street or, or in a group with us. This was someone we were somehow connected to, whether a relationship or a parent or a sibling, someone we trusted, someone that should have been there for us. And, and they've betrayed us. And so it's really hard to, to go with trusting someone else. But at the same time, it, it really is about me trusting that I can make that decision on who. And there's a great Brene Brown quote on, on talking about who you share your story with and not yeah. to share it with people that haven't earned that trust. And I think that's where we get caught. Yes. And you know, I, I'm of two minds, except for when we deal with difficult people, the relentlessly difficult people I call hijackals. I like to give trust in an open way and then calibrate whether or not it's safe, right? Like with most human beings, you can trust until they prove untrustworthy. Yeah. But I think what we need to talk about today is how do you calibrate if that even is a good beginning point, right? I, w I encourage people to be open to other human beings, but to have really careful ways to decide, is my trust well-placed? Is my love well-placed? Is my openness well-placed? Because once we've been hurt, once we've been damaged, once we've been cast aside or discarded, that gets really hard to know. Can I? Should I? Hmm. And I, I hear so many people in my groups and my clients say, no, nah, I'm never going to date again. I can't trust anybody. Mm -hmm. And that's such a shame because it's not true. Yeah. You can trust. And, and so that's something we really want to talk about today is 
building, rebuilding trust. I mean, I've had clients, I work with couples a lot, um, where somebody's done something pretty awful. But we can, with willingness and openness, rebuild trust. But if we've been discarded or we finally woken up and smelled the herbal tea and said, you know, my mother was a narcissist or I was raised by a hijack call and I have this mindset, I have this way of looking at the world and now I realize that all the things that they told me about me were not true. And yet I've gone through my life behaving as though they are true and letting other people like my mother or father, whichever hijackal parent we had, into my life. Yeah. And then finally I wake up and go, oh, this is not good. No, no, I'm not having any more of this. And, and we have to do the work and find out where that all is. And so even as a young child, were we welcomed with joy? Could we trust the people who brought us home from the hospital? Right. You know, it's as basic as that. And, and like, I think that people should know they can trust again, but they should have done their homework to learn um, what bad behavior looks like. Because very often it's charming. Very often it is like the most love you've ever felt in a quick time period. And, and you're overwhelmed by that. And so um, when you become suspicious and you actually know the red flags, then you, you guard what you share with them so that you aren't giving away the farm. You aren't giving too much to them and making yourself vulnerable, right? Yes. And one big caveat that I would have for every human being, no matter what, is to listen more than you talk when you are in a new relationship. Mm -hmm. When you learn to not be the warm puppy, jump in and want to tell them everything every, about themselves, yourself, um, then you just say, okay, I'm going to... I'm certainly going to give in this conversation, but I'm going to be a little more careful. I'm going to listen with different ears to say, okay, what am I really hearing here? Mm -hmm. You know, how many times have somebody said to you, and I'm sure in your group says in mine, they say, well, you know, I just jumped in and it seemed so wonderful and he or she was the perfect person. I felt like I died and gone to heaven and had my soulmate. And then it turned out to be so bad. Well, yeah, remember these narcissists, these hijackal narcissists, um, they, that's what they traffic in. They traffic in being the perfect person, that they read you like a book, they give you what you want, they make you feel the way they want to make you feel and the way you've longed to feel. And so you become bonded to them quickly because you believe oh finally yes and so you know you're just so longing to be loved and known and heard and appreciated and accepted and they seem to do that for you and then you feel so let down when you find out that was misplaced so learning to just step back a bit and listen really listen like what is that person really saying and, and if I were to look at what someone was saying in, in that more observing kind of a role, um, one of the things that I would be looking for is their history, right? If they're like instantly their ex was a crazy person, right. for me, I would think, okay, now there's a fine line because that that's certainly a red flag to us to make sure that that never happens again. But you know, people, our exes are saying that about us. So, you know, I'm like, oh, do we judge like the circle? You know, I don't know their story and their crazy ex because we did, we had a crazy ex. So now we're telling that story. But um, to me, that that's the most important part is how are they and, and not just listen to their words because listen yes. to their actions. You can, oh, yes. You can actually hear it in their voice as they're talking. Um, and, and feel this kind of, of truth, if you would, if we just shut up and listen, like you were saying, because mm -hmm. they'll give away too much because they're going to want to fill that in. And, and so many people that I have talked with, um, they believe when the abuser 
is molding themselves to everything that you've just told them. You've given them the script. And if you like chocolate chip cookies with one nut on it, and they do too, that's a bad sign. That's <laughs> yes. not a normal thing. You know, someone might want two nuts on their cookie. And, and for them to have everything that you've just spit out that you want in your life, that they are that perfect person, yeah. there's got to be differences or else it's not necessarily real. Well, and that's the exact purpose for listening. Mm. But you have to be an emotional grown up to a degree to learn how to listen because you're longing for love. Mm -hmm. So when someone seems to be so interested in you and asking questions about you and how do you feel about that and they're, they're just moving towards you and you, you finally go, oh, somebody cares, somebody, mm -hmm. you know, you feel so good. And it's hard to say to you, which is what we're saying now is, okay, I know you want that. I really know we all want that. but take a step back. You're not doing anything but using a little extra time, mm -hmm. not bringing out your judgment, your critical self and all that. You're just taking a little more time to, to even say, oh, what did you learn from that? So he tells you about his crazy ex and you say, well, what did you learn from that? And if he didn't learn anything about himself in that, okay, there's something to know. It was all about her. Everything was her fault. Everything was terrible. Now, you and I, as people who have recovered to whatever degree we can ever call ourselves a recovering <laughs> hijackal bait, um, we know that when somebody is uh, not taking responsibility for, okay, there must have been something in me that found that attractive, that needed that, that wanted that, that went along with that, let me heal that part. So that's why when people are talking about rebuilding, I say, don't go too quickly. And as you wisely said earlier, Tracy, do your own work first. Mm -hmm. When someone says to me, well, how, well, what should I do? I say, okay, let's get through the leaving process and let's empower you to do that. So unless there's physical or sexual abuse, I always encourage people to stay and let us get you empowered, get your mindset on straight as well as taking care of the finances and all the things that we need to do in order to be in the best shape when we leave, but to be in the best emotional shape you can, because what could be more horrible than to go screaming out of a relationship with a hijackal with only the clothes on your back while they have control of all the finances and you are sitting disempowered in some shabby apartment somewhere saying to yourself, well, at least I'm out. Right. Now, of course, you may have to do that if there's sexual or physical abuse and take your children out of there too. It's not a judgment about that. But if you have the choice, mm -hmm. empower yourself first because then you will learn how to calibrate whether you can trust another human being. You can practice on the hijackal. Right there, they're still in your house. You can practice and see what skills and strategies work and don't work and calibrate what's going on. And then when you do leave, you're prepared and you're much more whole and you're empowered to know that I can keep myself safe out there. Because there are three things that I think an emotionally healthy relationship has. Any emotionally healthy relationship at work, at home, with your parent, your kid, whatever. And that's equality reciprocity and mutuality and once your child is an adult i don't mean when they're little but when your child is an adult there has to be equality like we're now both adults and i don't pry into your life you don't pry into my life we're available to talk we're not available to talk we have to treat each other with respect of emotionally healthy adults so equality is important reciprocity you know, it's not all one-sided. I'm not talking about a quid pro quo. I'm not talking about keeping score. <laughs> I mean, that there is giving and taking on both sides. And, and you feel like, okay, this is reciprocal. Mm -hmm. And then mutuality. A person has to know enough about you to want for you what you want for yourself and be willing to support you to have that. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what a hijacker won't do. A hijackal is the opposite of someone who can have mutuality. And that's what you have to be able to calibrate. And you, you have to be able to identify it. And I think um, 
you know, we do have a responsibility before we go out there to try to trust someone to know that we are that whole person again, because when you've been damaged and the layers have come off that you don't have trust, that you fear, that you are financially, you know, afraid, those become vulnerabilities. If, if you are financially strapped and, and yeah. you are looking for love and they've got money, then, then they could potentially look like a, a good mate, but really you're, you're putting yourself in more financial jeopardy by um, being in need of someone to fix you, to make you whole, the other half, all of that stuff. If we are whole when we go in and we have the, the, the armor to know that we can deflect someone that isn't good, that we have the strength to set boundaries and say, I'm sorry, that's not going to work. If you don't have strength to, to say something like that, then you are not ready to go out there. And so you need to build your strength up and your, your skills, and then you hit the, hit the market. <laughs> yes, and this is so important because that's how we got into these relationships with these relentlessly difficult people. Everything that happened to us up to the day that we met that person and was involved with them, including when they brought us home from the hospital, <laughs> um, that impacted us. Now, I just want to say something about having that as a parent. You know, if you had a hijackal parent, um, the research actually shows that in the first two years of life, when we have much less brain development that we have by the time our brain stops growing at 25, that there, we have already had the seeds planted for the four kinds of personality disorders. Really? Yes. And so... You know, that doesn't mean that they're always going to grow, but the seeds have been planted. And what I say, to put it in just more general terms, is if you're raised by a hijackal, the chances are you're going to either be a hijackal, or on the other end, you're going to be hijackal bait. You're going to attract hijackals. And of course, people are in the middle there somewhere. But the thing is, if you were raised by a hijackal, you are going to be attractive to other hijackals because you almost smell right. You know, your precondition is almost a hijackal pheromone, you know, that says, oh, this one you can probably whisk off with and abscond with their self-esteem. Grab this one. Mm -hmm. So what you're talking about doing your own work says, hmm, I'm going to hijackal proof myself, right? Exactly. And, uh, and that's absolutely invaluable. You, That's how you learn to trust yourself. Yes. You learn yeah. to trust yourself because you have the knowledge. If you were going to go out and ski, I'm in Colorado, so skiing's big here. I've skied twice. I accidentally went onto a blue hill. That was bad. It was straight down and I was scared out of my wits and almost broke bones. But when you learn to ski, you don't just normally go on the blue hill. You start on the green. You start on the bunny. You learn, right? It's learning. It's maybe even taking lessons. This is the same thing we have to do in relationships. We need to take lessons to protect ourselves. We need to empower ourselves with this knowledge. And then we can trust because we have faith in ourselves that this shit isn't going to happen again. That's right. And you know, it's hard to believe that we need to take lessons. But once we've been hurt, you know, it's the same thing as you go to the doctor and you find out that you have something going wrong with your body that's the result of something you've been doing. Mm -hmm. You don't say, if you, want to, if you want to get well and you want to have a healthy life, you don't say, okay, I think I'll keep doing that. You take the medicine, you do the protocols, you take the therapy, you do whatever you need to do so that isn't there. And that's really what we're talking about. You didn't know you were creating all of this when you attracted a narcissist or a hijackal. Well, you didn't know that. No. But no. once you've had the effect, once you're downtrodden and worn away and torn away and you realize it, then at that moment... That's when you have to start learning to do things differently, to think differently, to look differently at things. Mm -hmm. And that's where you take the lessons is how to do that. I got this curriculum and now I need this curriculum, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's just wonderful to know that you can go and take this curriculum.
-hmm. like this one didn't work so well for me so let me go and get this one right Right. so it's not a failing which is my point you know if that happened to you don't spend a moment being upset about all the that oh i should have done it differently no start right now and learn how to do it differently right because you you just waste time now i'm not saying in the therapeutic process that you don't want to go back and figure this stuff out so so you can get that handled i do that with my clients but <laughs> i'm just saying that from this moment forward you have a new hat you say okay that's what i did before it didn't work very well what do i need to do right now how could I listen differently? So I think beginning with, what does a person talk about? I had a person in my group the other day who said they went on their first date and the person talked about that they had had three people in a row, three. It was a woman in the group. So she'd gone out with this fellow and he quite proudly told her that he'd had three women who just didn't get it. They, they, they were difficult and they were this and that. And I thought... Oh, I'm so glad you're in the group because she said as soon as as soon as he did that, she said I, I could feel myself moving back in my seat. I was just like not leaning in anymore. I was like, Oh, when can I get out of here? You know? Yeah. And it was like so good. Yeah. Okay. You made it you made a change. You've shifted your mind and you've shifted your mindset like, Oh, I'm not gonna jump in and talk to you about how awful relationships can be. I'm watching and I'm listening and you just told me that you just participated in three awful relationships. Wonder, could there have been a common denominator in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they need to uh, look that all of these things, they, these signs that we've missed before are things mm-hmm. that we just have to be aware of. Like she sat back in that chair, her instinct said, ding, 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 there's something wrong here. And maybe this, there's more to this story. And that's what we need to do. We need to just not hold on to what they're saying as law, you know, because that's the way we've been fooled before. They're perfect. They're wonderful. Everything's great. They did nothing wrong in their life. Um, It's taking all of that and, and really diluting it and going, that's not really, that's not working for me. And, and have, the skills to set a boundary and just say, you know what, I'm worth more. And yes, you looked good on paper, but you're not worth my time. And Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be the fourth story that you can run to the fifth girl with, (laughs) tie it all together. And I'll be one of the crazy ones. You know, if you see that kind of behavior, those should be flags that we should just not hold on to this person. No, absolutely. And another thing when you're developing within yourself, I hope that every single human being will learn to be positively assertive. And what I mean by that is a little different than what some people hear when I say that. If you accord yourself the right to take up space and draw breath on this earth, and I write about this in Kaizen for Couples, but I developed this thing called the personal weather report. And the personal weather report is a way to be assertive because you're only talking about yourself. It will, it will help you so much in every single relationship. So to be assertive is to believe that I deserve to take up space and draw breath. And therefore, I also have every right to say what I think, what I feel, what I need, and what I want as long as I'm only talking about myself and I never use another pronoun, I do not speak about another human. Mm -hmm. So I can say something like, I feel very disrespected right now. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell you you were disrespecting me, although a hijack all would jump on that one in an instant. There's another flag. (laughs) (laughs) But you you want to be able to say, you know, I feel very disrespected right now. I don't feel like my voice is heard. And that's okay. You are allowed to say that. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to say, you know, when when I feel disrespected, I feel like moving away. I feel like I'd like to take some time by myself. Again, you're being assertive. You're just talking about you. Mm -hmm. And please don't fall into that old communication thing that some people I heard the other day are still teaching, this thing called the I message. Yes. My message is simply a veiled way to blame somebody. 
Yes. When you do the, and I messages, when you do this, I feel this way. Okay, great. Feel that way. And it's your choice how you feel. I'm mm -hmm. not, nobody, a human is making you feel anyway. So it's very important for you in the context of building trust is to actually believe that you deserve to be able to say what you think, feel, need, and want. Mm -hmm. And not be afraid if the other person is going to go away or be angry or upset or not like you. That's because you, that's not your person if right. they get all upset with that. That's just not your person. There'll be another person along in a minute. That's right. And someone will, and, and we want someone to love the, the you know, the, the bad things about us. You know, and, and we want them to sure. support us in whatever we're doing. And if, if it's us speaking out and saying how we feel and they don't take it well, move on. Oh, bye. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's a great way to find out. You say you're dating and you say to somebody, you know, one thing that really bothers me is when I never feel heard. I feel like, you know, I'm no, no one's really listening to me. It really bothers me. See what think, someone does at that moment. And, and think about what that means, because a lot of people like don't realize that what that means is in this conversation, if you told them that, you know, you had a son or something was happening and they aren't listening or they aren't coming back, how did that go? You know, mm -hmm. really caring and, and actually retaining the information that you gave them right. is, is someone that's engaging with you and really something that you want. You don't want someone to, like, if you spit out things and, and you're not heard, you come back to them the next time and, and they don't even remember what you said, there's your evidence. This person isn't really listening and doesn't really care. Right there, another sign. Yeah, another sign and a red flag. And if they do this, which is also part of this, this uh, syndrome, if you like, of collection of things to look out for that are red flags, is that you say, you know, this happened to me. And instead of reflecting, like you were just saying, something reciprocal, how would you feel about that? How did that happen? What, you know, what went down? And they demonstrate some interest in you. If their response is, oh, that happened to me, let me tell you about it. Okay, another reason to sit back. Like, did I just get completely denied here? Mm -hmm. like, I was talking about me, and you came back and pushed you in my face. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to trust a person like that if I'm smart. They do not have my best interest. Mm -hmm. They are not interested in me. They are not willing to hear me. Now, I'm not talking about the fact that you have a five-minute conversation and you write the person off. I'm talking about when you have a conversation that is beginning to say, let's learn about each other. And this is a pattern that you see. Mm. You know, I have a girlfriend who dates, and she's been dating as long as I've known her, which is 17 years. And one of the reasons that she, she finds everybody unacceptable is either there isn't any chemistry or they weren't tall enough or I just didn't feel it. And I think, you know, she makes these decisions in the first 30 seconds. I swear she does. And I said to her, finally, I said, you don't want anybody. You, are, you like the story that you're looking and there are no great guys out there. But you don't want anybody because on a first date, everybody's a little nervous. On a first meeting, you know, yeah, the person may talk too much about themselves because they're nervous. How about a second date or a third date? You know, you're not going to hopefully jump into bed with them unless that's the arrangement that you have. Um, so you have time. Yeah. And then you, you observe that as somebody gets a little more comfortable, is this truly who they are? Is this really the pattern? And that's when you are calibrating, can I trust them? Right. And, you know, being assertive is an important thing. And so yeah. many people, too many people deny their gut. Their gut is going, no. Yeah. And yet they're going, oh, no, no, no. You know, this person might be the person. Right. You know, don't be in such a rush. Believe it. Right. Yeah. Believe your gut and listen to your gut because it's so, it's so key. And you are hardwired to have visceral responses to things. So don't deny that. But if you've been with the hijacker for too long, your body's kind of stopped saying too much. It's I, gone I like, 
I like to tell people in in this situation is slow it down. Oh yeah. Slow down and don't rush it because that's when we get the opportunity to see their true colors. So two, three dates are are like not enough to go, okay, I know this person. How about if you are testing them? How about if you can't make it? And do they get angry with you? Um, you know, watch these reactions. Um, mm-hmm. If if you're the kind of person that's late all the time and, and you're late and they get upset with you, they're not accepting you for what you are. And, and that's an important piece of this to make sure that you're actually showing them like the real you. I have a friend yeah. also, 400 men she told me the other night that she's dated in the last three years. Oh, wow. 100 men. And I have been there. She's back in Connecticut and I have been there. And she just like, isn't herself. She puts this pompadour show on and I'm like, where's the burping farting girl I've known since I'm <laughs> seven. This is, she's like, I don't do that. I'm too proper. And I'm like, really? Because the, she's not being her. So right. how is she going to find someone if she doesn't present her real self? Her real self is still loving and kind, but she thinks that she has to be this certain way. She also has the too tall thing. He has to be a certain height. He has to make $1 more than her. She's got a lot of criteria, but she's made it through 400. That's crazy. Yeah, well, that's the same as my friend. You know, it's fear. Mm -hmm. Like, I have my reasons why these people are not good. No, you're just petrified. Mm -hmm. you know, to actually be known. And I get it, Mm -hmm. you know, Uh, and she hasn't even had terrible relationships to let somebody into her life, to believe that somebody would love her is really difficult. And so she's afraid she's heading them off at the past before they reject her really. That's the fear that I'm talking about. So in talking about trust, I think we also could put into this conversation an important piece, which is you're not here to live up to the expectations of other humans. Once you're an adult, that's not your job anymore. Mm -hmm. If you sign up and say, yes, I will do that for you, that's, that's an agreement you make. But generally, you're not here to live up to the expectations of other humans. You're here to live up to your own. Mm-hmm. And probably if you've attracted hijackals before, that hasn't been something you've allowed yourself to be. You've been molding yourself for what they want mm-hmm. rather than calibrating to see if there's something you want. And be what you want. Like my friend, be the wonderful person I've known for 45 years. Be that person and you would find someone that loves that person. When you are in this place where you are molding yourself to fit into that, that expectations of another, you're just setting yourself up to fail because that's not the real you. And one day you're going to wake up and they're going to see the real you and, and your mask is going to fall. Where did that person come from? They're going to run because this wasn't what they signed up for. Yes, and if you happen to be with a hijackal and that person is not showing you their true colors because they're love bombing you right now, mm-hmm. and you are being a person who will mold yourself to who they want, they're going, hey, got a live one here, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> they, and so your ability to learn anything about trust has just been completely denied because now you're going to trust someone else to live your life for you and tell you how it is and how you should be. And those are all big red flags that you shouldn't, that you shouldn't be doing anything there. You know, I think Gandhi, he said this wonderful thing. He said, I'll not allow anyone to walk through my mind with their dirty feet. I just saw that quote the other night. (laughs) Yeah, well, I've been using that quote for years because it's so helpful. Like Mm -hmm. you have to know when it feels like someone's walking through your mind or your life with their dirty feet, right? Because they're just looking to tread on you, Mm -hmm. not inspire, lift up, motivate, love, uh, honor, cherish, any of that, nurture, nourish. They want what they want when they want it. And they're going to tell you how awful they are. And then if you're not healed and you haven't done your own work, 
you are going to not believe them. Oh, but I can fix them. If they were just loved enough, if I just took care of them, they had a terrible childhood, you know, they need loving and I can provide that and they'll change. No, they won't. Do not go into a relationship where you want to change another human being. It's already doomed. Yes. Uh, I learned that the hard way twice (laughs) no maybe three times (laughs) you cannot change them and also important to note they could pretend to change but you can't expect that they've changed like for example my ex-husband my first one was not a a narcissist um but he he was very limited in his social skills He had no friends. He didn't own jeans or shorts. This was him. This was him for 45 years at that point. And I came along and, oh my God, he bought shorts. Oh my God, he bought jeans. How could I have lived my whole life without jeans? How could I have lived my life without friends? Oh my God, I'm so glad we have friends now. We, but it wore off and he he went back to being a recluse and didn't wear his jeans anymore. You know, it, 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 I thought I changed him. I thought I brought him. I thought my love made him better, but that's not it. So accept the person for what they are and where they are. And don't think you can, you can change them because it never ends well. No. And, and believe them when they tell you who they are, they Mm -hmm. always give it away. Yeah. But you don't believe it. No. And so, you know, these are important things because we want to have someone we can trust in our lives. We don't want to live in fear and isolation. And we don't want to have to marginalize ourselves because we don't want our heart hurt again. Mm -hmm. So these are valuable things that we're talking about today that, yeah, you've got to walk through this stuff. You've got to heal this stuff within yourself. Now, I, I tell my clients all the time, When you leave a relationship with a narcissist or a hijackal and it's been difficult and abusive, give yourself two years to heal. Don't go jumping around looking for somebody else. Do your work. You know, get yourself established. Calibrate the life that you want. You know, do I actually want that spatula or do I prefer the turquoise blue one? Sometimes you have to just go to the very practical things. What am I bringing into my life? Mm -hmm. Am I making do or am I actually having what I want? You know, there's so many things to learn because we have to have a new mindset. We have to have a new perspective. We have to have an openness to seeing things differently. And we have to demonstrate respect for ourselves. Yeah. And, and, And stop paying attention to that biological clock because that puts fear in people. You know, Mm -hmm. all my friends are over 50, maybe over 60. And they're just like, I need to find someone. The clock is ticking. You know, if you're you're 30 and you want to have a baby, the clock is ticking. There's always a clock ticking. But that doesn't really mean you have to rush or settle. And when we look at that clock, a a 60-year-old clock or a 30-year-old clock, I want to have baby clock, you are hurting yourself because you do settle. When that fear comes in, you settle for things and go, well it's okay. I guess it's just him or her. Settling is never good. Accept the person where they are. Every wart and burp that they've got, if it's them, love that. And if something about them is not right, do not settle because of time. Yeah, I agree with that. And I also agree that we we have to know where that, that line is between settling and being perfectionistic. Mm -hmm. You know, there are certain things that you can overlook because you love a person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I don't like it. Okay. My partner, he's happy to go to the same restaurant every time and order the same food. (laughs) And for me to say, let's try a different restaurant. Well, why? We like what we eat over there. I love the guy. I love the guy every breath he takes, I love. So we go to the same restaurant, not a deal breaker, right? Right. So know what what is important to you and know what's unimportant to you. But do know who you are. 
mm-hmm. and know what's important to you, what your values are, what your vision for your life is, what your beliefs are, what you're up to in the world, what's okay with you, what's not okay with you, where are your boundaries, know how to set boundaries, know how to hold boundaries, know how to put consequences to boundaries. Then you'll feel safe with yourself. And then if you trust, you will know that you have based that trust on something worthwhile. Right. That's how we trust, is we do this work on ourselves and we perfect our armor so that we aren't fooled again. And, and when all that happens, we will trust. And if we believe that there is someone out there that is good, instead of believing that there's a narcissist or a hijackal around every corner, um, believe that there's someone good and they will come to you. The people that put up this wall and say, "Mm, I don't know, I don't trust them out there. Well, of course you're going to find the ones not to trust. So open the universe to, yeah, maybe there's someone good and then let it happen and take care of yourself. Yeah. Then you become good at figuring out who to trust. Exactly. You know, that it's always going to come down to us doing our own work. I mean, there's no magic. You're going to have to figure it out. You're going to have to figure out who you are, what you want, what you stand for, what kind of life you want, and be willing to ask for it. Mm -hmm. And if somebody says, no, I can't give you that, believe them Mm -hmm. and move on. Yeah. Right? So we don't want to be wallowing in the past and if too fearful that, okay, I'm, I don't feel safe to go out there. If that's the case, do the work, get clear with yourself, you'll build up some ability to go out and try it on again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I said to a client, she called me the other day and I worked with her years ago and she said, I never understood what you meant. She wanted to go out dating when she just left a hijackal. And I said to her, if you must, I want you to think about it as practice and you go to, you go wherever you go. And she would go to this particular bar she liked. And, and so a guy approaches you, very cute very beautiful woman, very bright. And he, he has a conversation with you. And no matter how much you enjoy the conversation, you say, thank you so much. It was lovely to talk with you and leave. And she said to me, I can never understand why you told me to do that. Like it, it could have gone somewhere. I said, well, what do you th- understand now? She said, oh, that practicing not jumping in quickly, that practicing, not just wanting to have a man in my life. She said, that was invaluable practice. Mm -hmm. She said, I just missed many people who probably would have put me back in the same horrible place. That's right. And and if it really was meant to go to another date or another thing, then it would. And we've, we've passed that point of if they really are interested, they'll show it. You know, instead of us chasing, oh, I, uh, who's, he's cute. Oh, yeah. You know, none of that stuff anymore. We have to protect ourselves. Yes. And know that this, even though we're two women talking, Tracy, know that the same thing goes for men dating hijackal women. You yes. know, they can be very cute. And you may even think that high maintenance is cute, but it's not cute for very long. <laughs> right. And oh. know that. Know that if a woman becomes demanding, no. If a woman is just assertive, that could be intriguing to you because she can have a life on her own and she can stand alone and she can come together with you. But if she is demanding and wanting to make you over and tell you how it is and this is the the only thing that will do Uh and you find yourself resenting it, run. Yeah. Run early. You know, the the men... um, they, they have a difficult journey in this kind of thing because um, I, I don't want to generalize like this, but there are some very, very bad women too. And they use powers of um, that, that the, you know, it's just a different experience. And I think that um, men have to definitely take this to heart as well. Same yeah, rule, apply, do your work, learn and yes. empower yourself because the, there's, danger out there. You know, we have to like make sure that, um, that, that it's not just checking the boxes, make sure they're real, make sure that they're going to hold up when you wash their hair. <laughs> like, just like, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, I've seen that where, where they're just so beautiful and everything's perfect. And then you wash off the makeup and you've got a monster. So be careful. Yes. And, and um, for 
either sex. What's important is if somebody wants to move too quickly, mm -hmm. if they say to you, oh, I know I love you already, or I just know we're going to get married, or, you know, let's be exclusive. No, 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 no. You, you just simply say, oh, I've got all the time in the world. No, you know, and you let somebody know that you are not to be rushed. Mm -hmm. You are simply not to be rushed. And hijackers will go off looking for other bait. Yeah. And when you tell them that, because they can only keep up the chameleon love bombing for so long. And so they're not going to keep it going if right. you are you are not going to be playing their game. Right. And so that's another way. Just calibrate how fast they want to go. And if it's if they wouldn't sit around and enjoy your company for one trip around the sun without moving in, marrying you or you two becoming pregnant. Yeah, give him a miss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this has been a great conversation. Thank you. Thank you too. I mean, this is this is coming from women. Who, both Tracy and I have been through this. I was raised by hijackers, so of course, my I first know. husband was one. Uh, I've attracted other hijackers. Took me a long time, even with a doctorate in psychology, to really realize the depth of what had been created which is why I do the work that I do. I've been there, I've done that, I have the nasty video and the ragged t-shirt, and I have figured out how to help myself and everybody else. Um, and, and that's very important because you can go to people who are mental health professionals and they don't understand this, Yeah. right? And it's important that you be with somebody who does and can help you move forward in a healthy way and and from the inside out Absolutely. so i know you have gold for them tracy as a support and as a survivor yourself and certainly this is important information that we've shared today that will give you a good indication of how much work there truly is to do and you can't avoid it no. or you're going to fall into it again and this is how you build trust is by knowing yourself so well and don't rush it i had someone a few weeks ago in one of my groups come up to me and said could i just check into like a betty ford clinic <laughs> and just like in a week be done and i'm like no nope. <laughs> everyone's journey is different you know for you and i we had hijackal parents so that meant that we attracted that sometimes people have perfectly normal family relationships but they end up in this or a work relationship so everyone's got a different recovery journey and so give yourself the time to understand it and to do the work absolutely yeah, perfect. you're worth it you're worth yeah, it but you have right. to believe you are exactly exactly so thank you so much and we will see you again yes thank you talk soon bye Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you've learned something out of it. And, and I hope that you have learned that you've got to go do some work and that you've got to keep on building your armor and making sure that you are trusting the right people. That's the key. You know, we've given our trust to people who were trustless. We weren't like they were not trustworthy. And so we have to learn how to identify them. That's the work. So whether the work is um, understanding them or understanding your own vulnerabilities, we've got this work to do. So thank you so much for watching. And um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. If you are interested in someone to coach you and get you through some of these situations that you want to understand more, um, I have coaching available. The link will be down below and I would be happy to help you in any way that I can. I have been through this journey and I will hold your hand and teach you what I have learned. And you don't have to read the 200 books or so that I have read. I'll teach it to you. So thank you so much and have a great day.